We're going to look at hypothesis tests of the population mean when the population standard deviation sigma is unknown. We're going to look specifically at upper tail tests. which look like this. So let's take a look at an example of an upper tail test. Suppose mu naught is equal to 12, the sample size is equal to 25, the sample mean is equal to 14, the sample standard deviation is equal to 4.32, and the level of significance is equal to 0.05. Now in this problem, since we're given the sample standard deviation instead of the population standard deviation, that means that the population standard deviation sigma is unknown. Uh, if sigma was known, we'd be given uh, sigma instead of s. So the first step in any hypothesis test is to calculate the test statistic. Now in the sigma unknown case, we write the test statistic as t, and it's equal to x bar minus mu naught over s divided by the square root of n. Now this is almost the same formula as the test statistic for the sigma known case. The only difference here is that we're using s instead of sigma, and that's because we don't know the value of sigma. So instead we use its estimate, which is s. Now the test statistic here is written t because it follows a t distribution. Uh, and to use the t distribution, we need what's called the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom we use here is equal to the sample size minus one. So let's calculate our test statistic. So our test statistic is equal to 2.315. Now there's two ways to use our test statistic. Uh, the first way is with the p-value approach. Our p-value for an upper tail test is the probability of getting a value for the test statistic as large as or larger than that provided by the sample. Now what makes this the p-value for an upper tail test is this part here as large as or larger. 
If it was a lower tail test, it would say as small as or smaller. And if it was a two tail test, it would say as unlikely as or more unlikely. So our p value here is the probability of getting a test statistic as large as or larger than 2.315, which was the test statistic that we computed from our sample. Now I drew the t distribution here because I said earlier that the test statistic follows the t distribution. Um, now what I mean here by the test statistic follows the t distribution is that the sampling or probability distribution of the test statistic is a t distribution. So our p value is the area to the right of 2.315 under a t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom and 25 minus 1 is equal to 24. So we want to look at what is the area to the right of a t value of 2.315 when there are 24 degrees of freedom. So we look at our t table under 24 degrees of freedom and we look for 2.315. Now here we see 2.064 which gives an area of 0.025, and we see 2.492, which gives an area of 0.01. So our t value, 2.315, is between these two t values, which means that the area to the right of it is between these two areas. So we don't actually have uh, an exact value for the p-value. What we have is a range for our p-value. And the range for our p-value is 0.01 to 0.025. So our p-value is 0.01 to 0.025. Now we have to use the rejection rule for the p-value approach. Which says to reject the null if the p-value is less than or equal to the level of significance alpha. Now this is always the rejection rule for the p-value approach, regardless of if it's sigma known or sigma unknown, or if it's lower tail, upper tail, or two tail. This is always going to be the rejection rule for the p-value approach. So our p-value is between 0.01 to 0.025, and our alpha is 0.05. So we can see that our p-value is less than our alpha of 0.05. So our conclusion is to reject the null, which means that we accept the alternative hypothesis and we conclude that the population mean is greater than 12. Now the second way of conducting our hypothesis test is through the critical value approach. In the critical value approach, we calculate a critical value Now, when sigma is unknown and it's an upper tail test, we write our critical value as T alpha. Now, if it was sigma known, we would write it as Z alpha in an upper tail test. 
If it was still sigma unknown, but if it was a lower tail test, we would write it negative T alpha. So our critical value here, which is the critical value when sigma is unknown for an upper tail test, we write it T alpha, and it's the value of the test statistic. Uh, now, when we say value of the test statistic, uh, since our test statistic follows a t-distribution, what we mean here is simply the t-value. So it's the value of the test statistic, or the t-value, corresponding to an area of alpha in the upper tail of the sampling distribution of the test statistic. Now again, our test statistic we said follows a t-distribution. So by sampling distribution of the test statistic, we simply mean the t-distribution. Uh, and of course, the t-distribution needs a degrees of freedom, and the degrees of freedom here will again be the sample size minus 1. So let's calculate our test statistic. So our critical value T alpha will be the T value providing an area of alpha, which is 0.05, in the upper tail of a T distribution with 24 degrees of freedom. So let's take a look at our T distribution under 24 degrees of freedom, and we're looking for an alpha of um, 0.05. So we match up 24 with 0.05, and we get 1.711. So that's our critical value. T alpha is equal to 1.711. Now our rejection rule for the critical value approach will be to reject the null if our test statistic t is greater than or equal to our critical value t alpha. Now if this was an upper tail test but sigma was known Instead of being t greater than or equal to t half, it would be z greater than or equal to z half. If it was sigma unknown but lower tail, it would be reject the null if t is less than or equal to negative t alpha. So our test statistic is 2.315, which is greater than our critical value of 1.711. So we decide to reject the null, and again we conclude that the population mean is greater than 12. And of course we get the same conclusion whether we use the p-value approach or the critical value approach.
Now, another way of looking at the critical value approach rejection rule is to say that we reject the null hypothesis if our test statistic is in this region here. And we do not reject a null if the test statistic is in this region here.